Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Nathan Danielson. I'm a product support technician here at RealityWorks. And I want to spend a little time today talking about our GuideWeld VR product here, uh, how it can be used in your classroom and enhance your welding program. So what we'll discuss today, I want to do a quick product overview, uh, go through some setup and installation options, discuss how the accounts interact with each other in the software itself. I'll get you inside the software so you can see the welding and the student view of things. Get you a quick overhead view of the curriculum and then give you a few uh, support links to kind of help you if you have questions afterwards or want to revisit anything that we discussed today. So our goals with the GuideWeld VR, uh, it's multifaceted. The main goal is to create qualified welders in less time. Uh, basically, uh, the GuideWeld VR offers a safe, uh, low-impact environment where students can really drive home those basic skills you need for no matter what type of welding you're doing. Uh, because it's just a matter of practice and repetition. And when you have a class full of students, it's hard to be able to watch them all at all times while they're in the welding booth working with live flame and uh, steel there. Uh, in a virtual environment, it gives them a chance to practice without necessarily having uh, constant supervision. And it's also giving them corrective feedback on their welding techniques. So that way, as they're practicing, they're practicing with good technique and skills every time they're trying to run that weld there. Uh, it's also designed to help create more effective welders. Uh, basically, you know, for students that are trying to learn welding for the first time, it can be a little intimidating. There's a lot that goes into just being able to get into the welding booth between safety and understanding what they're doing. And then they're working with live flame and arcs and in a virtual environment, it gives them a chance to get comfortable with what to expect from welding without necessarily worrying about any sort of accidents or repercussions or anything like that. And we find that it creates an opportunity for more people, more students to be able to learn effective welding skills that they can then carry into a professional or career uh, environment there. Uh, and then also, we look at reducing the cost of consumables. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, to get those basic welding skills down, it's really down to just practice and more practice. And when you're practicing with people that are just learning to weld for the first time, those consumables can add up quick between fuel, rod, metals. Uh, you can find yourself having a fairly large budget just to get them down to those basic skills to be able to run effective beads and welds. In a virtual environment, that cost is basically eliminated. And that way, when the students are going to live steel, they're already welding with a certain amount of proficiency that you wouldn't otherwise see if they hadn't had that opportunity beforehand. Uh, what comes with our guide weld VR system? Uh, first, you're going to get the gray base here. Uh, that's the main component. Then it's going to come with a MIG and or a stick process uh, that'll attach the gate uh, base. They're exchangeable. It's a fairly simple process to swap them out. Uh, it's going to come with a pair of welding gloves. And those welding gloves aren't actually required for the system to function. That's more just for that tactile sensation of holding the gun with the big bulky gloves there. Um, it's going to come with three different types of joints a lap joint, a T-joint, and a butt joint. It's gonna come with some US, uh, USB cable to connect it to a computer and a power supply cable to connect it to the power. And then you'll have total access to our online curriculum that comes with the GuideWeld VR system too. Um, the GuideWeld VR system functions not just as a good place to practice, but it can also function as an assessment tool. Uh, basically it's a way for you to kind of judge uh, a student's technique and skill before actually letting them into a booth, should you wish. Uh, some good practices for implementing the guide world VR system in your classroom. Um, we see a lot of success with student competitions, for instance. So students, uh, maybe you have a list of the top five uh, students on the board for each weld that you're having them practice. And you just let them practice for a week. They get a chance to test on it. 
and then the top five get recognition or get some sort of little prize, something like that. Uh, we find it's really good for entry level and introductory uh, practice into welding. So if you're going to a meet or uh, just trying to do some student outreach, a virtual welding environment is a really good place for students to kind of dip their feet in to get it to practicing welding and seeing if it's something they might like or enjoy without needing to, without all the overhead of needing to get them trained on safety and using the equipment and then using resources just for them to test out whether or not they think welding is something they'd be interested in there. Um, it's also good as an assessment tool. Basically, you can make sure they have those basic skills down before you start letting them work with uh, live welding there. Uh, you know, making sure they've got that speed down or their travel and work angles are sound or their nozzle so the plate distance is okay. Uh, that's really what our system is designed to do is to teach those basic techniques that you're going to use for whatever type of welding you have there. And likewise, it's just a chance for them to develop that muscle memory and skill uh, before going into a real welding booth. Because as I said before, it's really down to just practice and more practice uh, to really get a hang of how to weld there. And this gives them a chance to practice that and get comfortable with it before they have live sparks and flames uh, dancing in front of them. Uh, as far as our setup and installation process goes, uh, we have two different options for setting up the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, guide weld VR system. Uh, there's the standalone installation. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward. Basically, you download the software. Uh, there isn't any sort of subscription or anything for that. It's free to download, and you can install it on as many computers as you need. You install the software on a computer and everything you do is on that computer. So as the instructor, you would log in, you would set up classes, you would set up welds, students would log into that same computer and that same software with the password and username you provide them. And that's just how they would interact with the software at that point too. Uh, fairly straightforward. Sometimes you do need to get your IT involved to have the rights to set up the installation, though not always, depends on your network settings at school. Uh, but this is the simplest one and uh, pretty fast and easy to use. Uh, the downside is it doesn't scale particularly well. So if you have like three or four units in your school, you can find yourself setting up classes across the different units identically. And you don't, uh, anything a student does on one computer, they won't see reflected on the next computer down the line. That's where our multi-user configuration comes in. So if you find yourself with multiple units in the same classroom setting, you can set up a server basically. So you can have one of the computers that the system is on acting as a server, or you can have a dedicated server in your school in general. And you just set up the database there, and then you can connect any other systems with the welding software on it to that database. So you could be sitting at your desk and just have your computer, even if you don't have a welder on it, just have your instructor computer connect to that database so you can log into it, see grades, see reports, uh, set up new classes and welds. Uh, and then that way, if a student is on one computer one day and has to move to the next computer the next day, uh, they're able to see what they've done no matter which computer they are on, as long as they're all connected to the same network and database system there. Um, upside, it's very scalable and it's very convenient once you, you only have to set up things once and then it permeates throughout all the systems. Uh, the downside is it does almost always require some work with the IT to get things set up as far as permissions and uh, installing the server, uh, server software and that sort of thing. Uh, but once we get it set up, it's fairly slick and you can feel free to reach out to us at support too. We do this all the time. So we'd be happy to help you get that set up as well. Uh, as far as the software itself goes, first thing I'll mention is the database utility. This is something that's installed alongside the guide weld system. You won't necessarily run into this. If you're doing a standalone installation, you almost certainly not use this unless you're trying to recover a password from the uh, admin, from the uh, normal software. Uh, but in the multi-user configuration, you'll have to use this because this is where you go to point the database to the server and the correct locations and stuff. 
Other than that, you can use the database utility to back up the uh, data file or restore the data file. Uh, should a computer crash or something over the semester, you can restore a previous load, uh, taking a lot of that pre-setup effort out of the equation for you there. Um, supported operating systems, the guide will be are supported by Windows 7 up to Windows 10, and then Mac OS 10.9 up to the current version of Mac OS there. As far as system requirements go, um, because you need to provide your own computer system, the system requirements are fairly bare bones. Um, a dual core processor, DirectX 10 hardware, uh, 1280 by 720 resolution, two gigabytes of memories, one gigabyte of hard drive storage. It's all the sort of thing where you have to be kind of looking for a computer that couldn't already do most of that. Uh, the one caveat that I like to mention is for the video, is that one gigabyte of VRAM or video RAM. That's basically the memory that's on the video card itself. Um, if you don't meet that one gigabyte of VRAM, that's where we usually start seeing uh, a choke point basically, uh, where things either won't load at all or they'll load and they'll be choppy and sluggish and won't run smoothly. So if you're looking to get a new system for the guy will VR, that's the one thing I make a point of pointing out is make sure your system has that one gigabyte of VRAM. And otherwise, for the most part, your system should be good to go. All right, so let's take a look at how the accounts interact with each other on the Guide World VR software. Uh, aside from that database utility, which is a separate installation, uh, the Guide World VR software has three tiers of accounts. You're gonna have the admin, the instructor, and the student's accounts. Uh, the admin account is the super user. It's always there. You can't delete it or anything. Uh, it's going to have a default name and a password. And the only things you do in there is you create instructor accounts. Uh, you recover instructor passwords. And then that account is used to change the measurement system that the software is using, be it standard or metric. Uh, once you created an instructor account in there, it'll give you the instructor's username and it'll just set a default password for the instructor. Uh, after that, you log out, you log in using the exact same screen as the instructor. And the instructor accounts, what they do, and that's where you'll spend most of your time, is uh, they create the classes, they create students in those classes, they get to assign welds and manipulate welds. So uh, it's not just a list of pre-assigned welds, but you can also change what you want the speeds and the travel angles and the work angles and all that to be. Uh, so you can make custom welds if you want to to add to the system too. Um, so it can assign those welds and then you can view the reports for students and reports for the class as well on how they're doing with those practices. Um, the student accounts then, once you've created those students, like just like with the admin, it'll give you a username for the student account and set a default password for it. Uh, and then for those student accounts, that's where the students log in in the exact same log on screen and they get to practice welds, they get to test on those welds and they can view their scores there. Uh, so as an instructor, if you want a chance to kind of see uh, or run a weld yourself, you would need to create a student account for yourself and then you can use that account to practice the welds. Uh, but uh, aside from that, you can see the same scores as an instructor that you can see as a student as well there. So let's get you inside the welding booth for a moment to kind of see what the student sees here. Uh, before I go there, I'm gonna talk a moment about our dexterity guides. Uh, basically one thing that sets our VR unit apart from other virtual welding simulators out there is what we call dexterity guides. Uh, it's real-time feedback that the student is getting while they're practicing those welds. So that way, uh, every time they're practicing, even if you can't be there to be watching them, they are getting that instructive, corrective feedback in real time, um, showing them, making sure that as they're practicing, they're practicing with good technique every time they run that well. So instead of having a student in a live booth for the first time and they run the weld and if their technique is off, they have to 
show it to you. You're able to identify what's going wrong, and then they have to practice again with good uh, and try and correct that error. This lets them get that muscle memory down with good technique every time they're running that practice. Uh, we have five dexterity guides. There's going to be the speed indicator. That's going to be a plus minus and equal sign you see on the screen. And that's going to tell the student what it wants them to do. So if they see a plus, it wants them to speed up. If they see a minus, it wants them to slow down. Uh, the travel angle and the work angles, those are going to be on the top right and the top left hand corner of the screen there. And that's going to show the direction it wants the gun to move. So if they're tipped too far in one direction, you'll see an arrow pointing away and then they need to lift the gun up. And if there isn't an arrow, that means that they're at the correct angle. Um, there's also going to be a nozzle to plate distance or arc length there. Uh, that's going to be that little graphic on the nozzle of the gun. And that functions more like a level. Basically, you want that graphic to be green and in about the middle of that uh, picture. If it's too far back, the dot will turn red and be pulled too far back, you need to push the gun forward. If it's too close to the uh, material, it'll be red and you'll need to pull the gun back until it's sitting in about the middle there and showing green. And then last is going to be the straightness lines. Uh, basically, those are going to be those white dash lines you'll see above and below the gun, and that's where the weld needs to be in between for it to be considered straight. Uh, now, with each level of difficulty they go up, it's going to give them less and less leeway for what is considered correct for that weld. Uh, but at the same time, while they're going up in difficulty with the practices, it is giving them that corrective feedback sooner and sooner. Uh, so it's... Uh, dialing them in to proper technique and a good weld there every time. Let me get over to the VR software quick. All right. So this is the student view. Uh, this is what the student's going to see uh, when they log into the VR system. They'll see a list of their welds there, whether or not they're still practicing on them or they can take a test or they've completed them. They'll see their latest test score there as well. Uh, one thing I point out in the upper right-hand corner here, a student can actually change the handedness with which they're welding. So if they're left-handed versus right-handed, they can change that so they're welding from a comfortable position at a proper angle there. Uh, to run a practice, you'll just go over to the left-hand side here. You'll select the weld you want to practice, and you'll just click practice. It'll go through a little animation of them putting on their PPE and then approaching the welding booth. Uh, once they're there, it'll ask them to tack. Uh, one other thing that our system does is when it's tacking, that is the same time the system is actually calibrating itself. Uh, so when the student tacks, that's just making, that's calibrating the unit every time they go to run that weld. So there isn't like a separate screen you have to log into and touch the three points and make sure it's working. Instead, you're going to be working properly basically every time that weld is being ran there. <clears throat> so when it shows the tack, you can just hold the gun at the same angle it shows on the screen there. Same position, pull the trigger. Moves over to the right hand side, you do the same thing. And then after that, you're live welding here. So, as far as running that weld, you can kind of see those dexterity guides appearing on the screen now. Uh, but once I get into position, I just pull the trigger and then I start welding. You see that gun turned golden for a little bit there. That's basically a little bit of positive reinforcement telling the student, hey, you're doing everything right. Just keep staying the course. As you can see, as I tilt my gun too far one direction, it gives me that uh, arrow to point me in the right direction there. If I move it too slow or fast or too far away, I get that corrective feedback. Once you've ran enough of that well, you're able to click the save button in the bottom right hand corner. And that's where you get your score. The way the scoring works, it's going to grade you on what the work angle was, the travel angle, the nozzle to plate, 
the speed and the straightness indicator. Uh, it'll show you a little graph of where the gray area is what's considered correct, where you had to be in between. And then the orange line is where you were sitting at about there. So for instance, the work angle, I was on a novice difficulty. So I scored well, but if I had been on a higher difficulty, I would have been low on my work angle for most of that weld there. Uh, that being said too, on a higher difficulty, the system would have been uh, giving me that corrective feedback sooner, letting me know that my work angle was off and pushing me into that proper technique. Uh, it takes those five scores, averages them together, and that's where you get your final score there. Uh, as part of this, you also get the option of a video replay of that weld. So if the student runs the weld and you wanna come back after the fact and kind of take a look, uh, you're able to see maybe they're moving in uh, uh, stuttering motions as they're trying to get the speed right, or maybe they're rolling their wrist as they're moving along the weld. Kind of give you an idea of how they're welding without necessarily having to be there in real time to see them doing it every time. And then once you have more than one weld on the system, it'll show you a graph of the uh, scores they've gotten over time uh, in practices and for tests. So I'll go into the system again, just on a higher difficulty weld, so you can kind of see that. Uh, and that uh, video of them putting on their PPE, that only plays the first time they log into the system every time they log into the system. Idea being is they have more arc time and practice time in a class period uh, than watching that video every time they want to start a weld. So just like with the novice, you just hold the gun in the position it shows on the screen and pull the trigger. Same on the other side. And after that, you're live and welding there. Uh, one thing I'll point out too, uh, say a student is having some difficulty with their speed specifically. What you can do is over on the left hand side here, you can actually turn off some of these indicators and you can leave just the speed on. So that way, as they're running that weld, they're having to only focus on one thing and all that other extra noise is gone, kind of letting them a chance, giving them a chance to uh, uh, drill that home and get that, get comfortable with that. And then you can start introducing them to other parts of the technique as they go along and get better at it. Uh, another thing the guide will system can be used for is a demonstration tool too. So for instance, if you were to hook it up to, hook your screen up to an overhead projector, um, you can lecture while actually running a weld in a classroom setting without necessarily having to have all the students crowd around in a booth. And then you can change the camera angles and positions so they can see that bead being formed and uh, understand a little bit of the technique going on while you're lecturing and they can see it at the same time. Let's get you a quick look at the stick weld tool here. Uh, as far as swapping out the processes, you just turn off the unit. It's about a half turn to undo the plug at the front of the unit there. Then you take the other gun. Um, it's key to go in one way, but to make it simple on you, there's going to be a silver or white hash for what's the bottom of that plug. You'll just slide that in. And then once again, it's about a half turn to lock it into place. And then you're good to go. Power the unit on, and it sometimes takes a few seconds or a minute for it to recognize in the system. There we go. So I'll go ahead and start a stick weld here. <clears throat> so you'll notice this screen's a little different than for the MIG. Uh, that's because an added feature of our stick welder or stick process is it uh, is motorized. So that way, as you're running that weld, uh, that rod is being consumed. So they have to get that, so they get that practice in of having to feed that bead and keep that weld moving. Uh, rather than just there being a long stick at the end of a gun and they're running that bead across. Uh, so that way they get that uh, sensation of that needing to bring the stick in closer uh, smoothly as they're running that weld. So what you'll do here is you'll pick up the gun and the first thing it'll do is it'll extend that rod to its full length.
Then you'll see it go into the tacking position. Um, and just like with the MIG gun, you hold it at the same position you see on the screen and angle. And then for our stick gun, because when it's tacking is when it's calibrating, you'll push this orange button at the top. It'll move over to the other side, you'll push the button there. And then after that, you're live and welding. And it's just a matter of doing what you see on the screen. Oops. <laughs> Another feature, it does have the electrode stick too, if they're not moving fast enough or doing things incorrectly. It's kind of... And once again, you can see those dexterity guides kind of giving you that uh, corrective feedback as you go. And another thing I point out too, actually, uh, this coupon, uh, once you're done tacking and uh, calibrating the system, technically you don't actually need that coupon because it's a virtual environment. Uh, the students should be paying attention to what they see on the screen and getting that muscle memory as they're running it in real life. So in all truth, you could remove this coupon entirely and still be able to bring the stick in and run that well just fine because the screen is showing you what you're trying to do there. Just like with the make well, you can uh, turn off different dexterity guides. Um, you can change the angles the screen is on. Uh, a button that is here that you didn't see before is to reload that electrode. So if they've ran that electrode down, uh, they can, it'll go through an animation of swapping it out of the screen, it'll re-extend it to full length here, and then they can just continue welding where they left off. Um, otherwise, once they're done, you've got a button here, it shows them chipping the slag off of the weld there. And then you click the save button. And just like before, you get that chance to see your score, the graph for how they were doing, uh, a video replay and a graph history of everything going on there. Once the student has scored a 50% or more on a well, then they have the opportunity to take the test on it. And so for testing, it functions just like with practice except they don't have those dexterity guides anymore. So basically it'll have you pick up the unit, it'll extend the rod, it'll have you tack just like with practice as well. Then after that, you're up to welding and it is just up to practice and muscle memory at that point. All right, let me get back to my PowerPoint really quick here. So we did kind of go over the student report there. Uh, the report will also show, uh, also show uh, what the work angles, the plate distance, the speed was expected there and give you a uh, date, uh, the difficulty that was set, what joint it was on, the material being used. So you have all that information and you'll know what they were practicing and how they were doing as far as that practice goes. Uh, now, just a really quick overhead view of the curriculum. Uh, our curriculum for the guide weld VR system isn't meant to be just on the act of welding itself. It's meant to be a complete curriculum. So not just welding, but careers in welding, uh, welding safety, uh, understanding the basics of welding, spotting defects, that sort of thing. Uh, so the curriculum, it comes as a complete teaching tool. So you're going to have teacher's guides that will give you the information you're looking to lecture on, what you're going to need to have printed out ahead of time to be able to hand out to students. Uh, it'll come with slide presentations for each lesson. Uh, so that way, as you're lecturing, the students can see visually what you're speaking of as well there. 
it'll also come with student note pages. So you're kind of getting those three touches there. They're hearing what you're talking about. Uh, they're seeing it. And they're also having a chance to write it down, kind of drill that information home. Uh, and then naturally, no curriculum is complete without quizzes and tests, uh, just to kind of uh, check to see if the students are picking up the right information, uh, see if there's anything you need to go over again in more detail or uh, just to cover again because it didn't make much sense to them. And there's going to be answer keys to with those tests and quizzes just to make grading it easier on you there. Uh, as far as some additional resources here, let me start by bringing you out to our support site. Uh, basically, on our support site here, uh, if you go to realityworks.com, under support and product help, you'll be able to find the guide world VR support site. And here we have a lot of helpful documents and videos that go through everything from what should come with the system to how to set it up and run welds uh, to troubleshooting common problems you see. If you see a how to, if you click on how to set up, you'll be able to download the VR software. And like I said, it's free to download on as many systems as you need. So you could download that if you wanted to even before buying, just to get a feel for how the software works and see if that's something you want to implement in your classroom. Um, it shows you how to set things up. And uh, yeah, basically, if you have questions about the VR software after this uh, demo here, feel free to go out to the support site. There's a lot of helpful information and videos out there just to kind of help round out your understanding of the VR system. Uh, otherwise, you can also reach out to us at Product Support. Um, if you were to go to Support and Product Help here, you'll see links that show how to reach us. You can reach us at uh, via chat, which we have on our website now. You can email us or you can give us a call at this number, 800-830-1416, option two with the menu, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have there. Uh, I'd also like to take a moment here now to talk about a few of our other systems as part of our uh, guide weld uh, uh, package there. Um, on our website, we've actually got a virtual welding or a welding solutions implementation page, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, the advantages of guide weld, advantages of virtual welding in general, uh, ideas for how you can implement it in your classroom, if you're kind of curious about that. Uh, so if you went to realityworks.com forward slash welding dash solutions dash implementation, I'll bring you to this web page here. Uh, we've got some testimonials of other schools using our welding system and what they think of it. A few case studies out there about implementing uh, virtual welding in the educational field and the advantages of it. Uh, gives you a look at different supply packs, uh, supply packs we have out there uh, for not just our virtual welder, but for instance, our uh, guide weld live system. The live system being the idea is it's the next natural step into getting comfortable in a welding booth, where once they've gotten that basic muscle memory and practice down, they can step into the guide weld live, which lets them set up with a real welder. And just like with the virtual welding system, where you can't necessarily be watching an entire classroom with the students at all time, uh, the system kind of steps in for you a little bit. And while they're wearing the welding helmet and running that weld, it is giving them in their peripheral vision a feedback as to whether their angles are off or their speed is off. So that way, as they're running that live feed, they have a chance to see uh, uh, that feedback that you would be giving them as an instructor to be practicing that weld properly every time. So now that they've got comfortable with the muscle memory, they can get comfortable with uh, the real life movements and uh, uh, positioning and such with the live system there. We also have our new common welding joints kit that helps your students identify the most common welding joints. The kit includes 10 stick and MIG coupon examples, as well as flashcards and curriculum that goes over joint types and proper welding technique. We also have a weld defects kit. Uh, that's something there to just kind of uh, teach and lecture on. It comes with, each one will come with its own curriculum too but it's really meant to be able to hand out to the students so they can spot defects in those welds uh, with flashcards and everything to kind of practice. You know, they see a weld, what's wrong with it, learn how to not do that or correct it, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we also have a bend tester unit that comes with our welding, uh, welding packages as well. 
uh, just so, you know, when they're starting to practice real welds in the classroom, they get a chance to see what the, uh, what the qualities of a properly ran weld should be. And then they can put those to the test too, uh, before they're actually welding big important things at that point. So Lastly, we have our welding career scenario cards that help your students develop and practice soft skills specific for a welding career. So if you came to this page, it'd be a good chance for you to see some of that information, testimonials, uh, get information about the costs there. Uh, we also have a few infographics at the bottom of the page too. They're just free for you to have if you want. You just click on the link. If you pull out, fill out a form and they just email them to you and you can just print them off and paste them up in your classroom there. Uh, they're there for you to use or not use, your choice. I also just wanted to make sure I brought you there so you could see that. So I brought you out to our support page, realityworks.com forward slash knowledge base. And then under there, you'll see the links for reaching out to us. And then you'll see the link for GuideWorld VR that you can click on and that'll show you the documents and the downloads and all of that. Uh, aside from that then, that's basically all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. Like I said, if you have questions, take a look at our support page, uh, take a look at that uh, landing page for the guide weld systems, uh, or reach out to us and support directly. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks again.